my friends, it's Pastor Karen with a Thoughtful Thursday. Well, these Thursdays keep sneaking up on me. Um, I'm so glad to be with you today. Um, as I was thinking about what I've been thinking about this week, um, I realized that I've had so many conversations, and I would imagine that many of you have too, about um, what it feels like to kind of be uh, maybe coming out of the pandemic. Um, what it feels like to be loosening up some restrictions, um, doing things that we haven't done for a while, um, and what that feels like. Um, it's really interesting because May is Mental Health Month as well, and so there's lots of articles and things written about uh, mental health and taking care of ourselves and understanding what uh, mental health professionals do for us and what good mental health looks like. Um, but there's also been just so many articles and um, really great writings about what this kind of re-entry looks like. Um, you know, we can't say post-pandemic yet because we know it's not over. Um, but we know that we are feeling like we can maybe do some more things and we can see more people. And maybe we don't have to wear masks in certain situations. Um, and, and although, like, when we say those things... We, well, we, I, I don't know about we, hopefully you too have the same feelings as I do, but um, I'm not always joyful about them. Um, I do still have quite a bit of anxiety about kind of that re-entry and what does that look like? And, um, you know, going to um, the grocery store still is very, um, um, very intentional for me. Um, it's hard to just kind of like walk in. I'm still like, do I have my mask? Do I have my key? Do I have my phone? Like, like you know, do I have my hand sanitizer available? Um, still just a lot of things kind of very um, in, right in the front of my brain. Um, and I'm just kind of really still have a lot of anxiety about meeting um, in large groups of people. Um, you know, whether that's outside or inside or with masks or without masks. Um, I'm still having a lot of anxiety about that. And so... It feels a little bit better for me to be reading some things written by psychologists or social workers um, about what this looks like and how clearly how I'm feeling is not, um, it's not I'm not by myself. There's lots of um, people who are, are feeling the same way and, and so much that we need to write about it. And so I'm sure that you've probably read articles or seen Facebook posts or, you know, Instagram posts about, about what that looks like. And so I hope that you're taking care of yourself and I hope that I can tell you that you're not alone if you're kind of struggling with this re-entry idea. Um, but I do think that one of the things I've read that's probably the most common is that, that we're really all doing the best we can. And we can say that about ourselves and we can say that about our families and our friends and the people around us. Like I really do think that everyone's doing the best that they can. Um, and so as I was kind of contemplating this week, um, this Thoughtful Thursday really forces me to kind of think about, like I said in the beginning, think about what I've been thinking about <laughs> and try to make some kind of sense of it so that I can share it with you. But um, I was reading um, a devotion this week and I, I read so many different ones and not all of them every day, um, but I was reading this one from Our, our Daily Bread. Um, it's a free publication. There's lots of ones just like this. It has just a daily devotion. You can read the upper room or um, tons of devotions online if you don't have one. They're super short. It's only like one little page like this long each day. And um, so this one was from Tuesday of this week, actually. So um, it was really interesting. And usually it starts out with like a story and then kind of ties in a biblical truth um, into that. So I just wanted to tell you the story because I thought it was just so interesting um, if we really think that the last, you know, 15 months or so, we have kind of been living in this darkness, um, you know, maybe isolated, maybe just protected. Um, but when I read about this darkness, that's kind of what came to my mind. So here's what it says. It says, in the mid-1960s, two people participated in research on the effect of darkness on the human psyche. They entered separate caves while researchers tracked their eating and sleeping habits. One remained in total darkness for 88 days and the other one for 126 days. Each guessed how long they could remain in the darkness and they were off by months. I guess they thought they could stay longer than they could. One took what he thought was a short nap 
only to find out later that he actually slept for 30 hours. And this is the truth. Darkness is disorienting. Darkness is disorienting. Hmm. When I read that, I thought, oh, that's a little bit about how I feel. I just don't really know how I feel sometimes. Um, darkness is disorienting. And we know that through the Bible, people of God have lived through dark times. The people of God have lived through being in the wilderness. They have lived through, you know, hundreds of years without hearing from God. They um, have been in, you know, involved in plagues and exile and persecution, um, darkness. And we might add that to our list as modern Christians that this pandemic, this past 15 plus months, um, was our was a wilderness for us, was a time of, of darkness. But we read in Isaiah chapter 9, it says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. So even though we have this darkness, we're promised this great light. And then John in his gospel, right in the fifth verse of his gospel, he doesn't waste any time reminding us that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome. The darkness did not overcome it. The light overcame. And that light is Jesus. <laughs> so we know that even though we're in this darkness, that we have this um, this light. And sometimes it's bright and shining and we see it and we hold on to it and we, we run towards it. And sometimes it still feels like it's far off and maybe it's just a glimmer. Um, but we have this, this trust and this belief that this light will overcome the darkness and also that the darkness will not overcome the light, which probably isn't always true in the inverse, right? Um, as I thought about that um, verse today, I, I thought about how we hang on to that light and what that means to kind of hold on to that and what that um, idea of hope means. And, and I, I thought, why am I feeling so anxious? Why do I feel like I'm spending a lot of time thinking about what's going to happen next and, and you know, what's it going to be to, to be in a group of people? What's it going to be to um, have people in my home and, and just socializing? What does that look like? And I think that we have that anxiety because we have hope. And at first I was like, Karen, that doesn't make any sense. But for me, we can think forward. We can think ahead because we have hope. And one of my um, very favorite scriptures this time in my life is um, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19. And it says, we have this hope as an anchor for our soul. And I'm sure that a lot of you that are listening are boat people, um, or you can appreciate the idea of the anchor. Um, and I love that the visual because the anchor doesn't keep the boat from moving at all, right? There's still going to be movement still impacted by the waves. Um, but this hope provides like a foundation, something for us to, to hold on to, um, in the message ver in the message version of, um, the Bible, he, um, Hebrew six nineteen says that we have this unbreakable spiritual lifeline. So if you feel like you're holding on <laughs> or maybe barely holding on my friend, that is hope. <laughs> that is hope. And so, um, Again, we're all doing the best we can. We're all going to move forward and come out of this pandemic time at different paces, in different ways, um, you know, inviting new things into our lives, maybe not going right back to what we were doing before this pandemic. Um, but either way, we're, we're all doing the best that we can. So I guess my message this week is just to keep hoping <laughs> Keep the hope, hold on to that spiritual lifeline and let the hope in Jesus be your anchor. Let it not take away the waves and the movement, um, but know that you're not going to float away um, and that I hope that you take care of yourself and that we take care of each other because these are new times for all of us. And so if there's ever been a time for grace um, towards each other. This is the time. So I hope you have a great week. Do something to take care of yourself. Do something to take care of someone else. Um, and I'll see you next Thursday. Take care.